Let me drop that. Get uh, Matthew chapter 1 and verse 21. Now, we taught you nationality, right? We taught you God's laws, right? We taught you uh, Christ. You know who Christ is, right? We can't do any of this without who? Without who? Without without God, right? So we're trying to bring you back to repentance, all right? But that's that only comes through Christ, through the Messiah. That's the only way that we can get repentance today, all right? Chapter 1, verse 21, what you got? The book of Matthew, chapter 1. In verse 21, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people. So Christ came to save you from all of those things we read about. The drunkenness, the adultery, right? The murder spirit, the hatred you have for your brother, the covetousness that you have to steal. To break any one of these commandments, all right, Christ came, the Messiah, to redeem us from that. We ain't got to live that life no more. We just got to trust in the Lord. That's what this means right here. For who? Only these people. The blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans. Today. All right? You know your nationality? Yeah, my son. Tell it to me all the time. What's your nationality, sister? Uh, all right, read what you got. And, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people. So he's coming for... These people. These people. That's the his people here. Come on. From their sins. From their sins. Right? Sin according to the Bible is breaking any one of God's laws. Any one of them. Alright? That's what sin is. According to the Bible. How long are we going to stay in sin? How long? Proverbs chapter 1. Verse 21. Hey brother. Hey brother, you go to church? Are you learning anything in church? They're not teaching you anything you need to know to get God's kingdom in church. They're not teaching you those things. They're not. Come talk to us. We got the solutions. We got the solutions. All right. Verse 21, read what you got. The book of Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 21. Come on. She crieth in the chief place of concourse. So this is a chief place of concourse, right? What did you see today? Brothers walking on the sidewalk, going inside the store, going out the store, walking from over here in the, uh, uh, the apartments, right? This is a chief place of concourse, right? Brother just walking out here. He wouldn't be here if this wasn't a chief place, right? Come on. In the openings of the gates, in the city, she utters her words saying, Saying what? How long ye simple ones? God says, how long ye simple brothers, all right? How long you simple sisters are you going to continue to break God's laws, all right? We need to learn what God wants us to do on this earth, all right? That's what we need to learn, and we need to do it. It's not enough for us just to know what I should be doing. You got to actually apply God's commandments to your life to make a difference, right? Right, we're going through stuff now because we don't keep God's laws. A lot of the things that we do, we brought upon ourselves. All right, so when are we going to change and take responsibility for our own actions? When are we going to do that? Are we just going to complain? All right, are we just going to complain? Are we just, are we going to wait for a handout from our oppressors, from the white man? Is that what we're going to do? No, that's not what we're going to do. We're going to make a difference. We're going to teach our daughters to not commit adultery. We're going to stop having sex with our women and not marrying them. That, these are the things that we're going to do to build our communities back up. You understand? This is what we're going to do. Read on. How long ye simple ones will ye love simplicity? And the scorners. And the what? And the scorners. And the what? And the scorners. Some scor a scorner is someone that comes over to cause confusion. Right. All right. In the midst of God's words. All right. To mock at what God says 
is set up to save your people. Right. Right. To mock up that is a scorn to the Lord. Right. All right? How long we going to be in the midst of simplicity with scorners delighting in their scorning? This is what you see right now, right? Come on. And the scorners delight in their scorning. And fools. And what? And fools. Do what? Hate knowledge. All right. All right. What is knowledge according to the Bible? That's the question that I have. That's right. My brother, what's knowledge according to the Bible? What knowledge. What's, I didn't come into the world. What's knowledge? The world, what's knowledge according to the Bible? The world might be saved. What's knowledge according to the Bible? Talking about it's, it's get, damn combination. Get uh That's Matthew. About. Uh, no, Malachi damn chapter two. All right. What's knowledge according to the Bible? All right. We're trying to teach knowledge according to the Bible. Knowledge is what's going to bring back our community, brother. I understand right now. I understand right now. You hate yourself. Right now you do. You do. All right. You hate yourself right now, right? Read what you got. The book of Malachi chapter 2 and verse 7. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge. God says the priest's lips should keep knowledge. What are we teaching right now? God's laws according to the Bible. All right, sister, stay with me. Don't let this brother distract you, all right? I'm trying to show you what knowledge is according to the Bible, right? Come on. And they should seek the law at his mouth. That they should seek what? The law. So knowledge, according to the Bible, is God's laws. There's no way that we can change and make a difference in this community without learning the knowledge of God's laws, right? Today, what were we teaching you? What were we teaching you today? How to not be a boyfriend. How to not be a girlfriend, right? That's what we were teaching you today. All right, how to take care of your children, how to dress so you don't attract a nigga. All yeah. right, how to how to dress so you don't attract someone that's just gonna have sex with you Jeez. and not marry you. Right. Right. That's what we teaching you today. That's the knowledge of God. Right. This is what's gonna save your community, sister. Right. All right, if you continue to dress and show your curves, you're gonna attract niggas that just wanna have sex with you. That's right. what you're gonna attract. All right, that's what you're gonna attract. All right, all right. So, so, so. From there, go to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 24, all right? This is what I want to show you, all right? Yes, yes. Nigga is in the Bible, all right? It's in the Bible, all right? It's in the Bible, all right? So we will let the... We get mad when we call each other niggas, but we ain't got nothing to say when the white man treating us like niggas. Hey, right? But we say, yo, you a nigga. Okay. Oh, bring that out. Like bring you that acting out. like a nigga. Right. You ain't got no home right. training. All right, you acting like a nigga. We get mad at each other for that, but we don't get mad when the white man put you in these projects and treat you like a nigga. You mad. That don't, that don't make sense. I want you to understand. Listen, brother. Listen, I want you to understand. Listen, brother, just, just listen to what I'm saying, brother. You just talking. You, you just talking. You just talking, bro. You're not listening. Listen to the Bible. I'm going to read this scripture. Listen. Verse 24, those that oppose themselves. 2 and 24, read that. The servant of the Lord. Verse 24, come on. The book of 2 Timothy, chapter 2 and verse 24. Come on. And the servant of the Lord must not strive. So if you're a true servant of the Lord, all right, you're not going to strive with foolishness. You understand? You're going to instruct it with the Bible. Right. This brother don't got a Bible in his hand at all. He can't tell, tell me to read a Bible verse. You just want me to listen to the things that's coming out of your mouth, your opinion, how you feel, how this world has made you feel right. for as long as you've been on this earth. Right? Come on. But be gentle. But be what? Be gentle unto men apt to teach. So we got to be gentle unto all men. All right, not just the sisters or the brothers that come and listen, all right, that come to learn, all right, to come to be, to take correction, to learn what they're doing wrong and how to fix it, right? We can't just be ready to teach you brothers and you sisters that's patient, all right, ready to accept correction. We also, we also have to be ready to teach who? We also have to be ready to teach who? We have to be ready to teach brothers like that too. All right, come on. But be gentle unto all men. Come on. Have to teach. Have to teach who? Patient. Patient. And meekness. And meekness doing what? 
instructing those. So we gotta instruct. That means I have to tell this brother, look, calm down. Listen, all right? Listen to the Bible, all right? Close your mouth and listen to the Bible, right? Come on. That oppose themselves. Because our people do what? We oppose ourselves, right? Right? When the last time you see him talk to his enemy that brought him over here on slave ships like that? When the last time you seen him talk to his enemy that brought him over here in chains and shackles? Right? When the last time y'all see him go inside that store and talk to the Arab like that? Y'all ain't seen that before. Why? Because we oppose ourselves. Read it again. Come on. And meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. Do our people not oppose ourselves? Is that is there more white or black crime, or is there more black or black crime? Which one, sister? Which one is it? Is it more white or black crime, or is it more black or black crime? You know why there's more black on black crime? Because our men are emotional and sensual. Our men are emo. This is how I look. Our babies we raise up. This is what they become. Right when they when there's not a father in the household to instruct them according to righteousness. This is what you get. All right. This is what you get. You get a brother that's mad and emotional. And he can't really express himself the way that he wants to. That's right. That's what you get. Right? What are we teaching out of the Bible? All right? Our people oppose each other. Right? We hate each other. Right? If, if we didn't hate each other, then we wouldn't disrespect each other. While you talking, right? I wouldn't speak while you talking. I would wait until you finish. I would say I have a question. I have something to say. Can I be heard? All right. Go ahead. What you got to say, brother? All right. You talk. And then I'ma talk. And then you talk and I'ma talk. That's how you have a discourse, right? But we can't do that today. Why? Because we oppose ourselves. We hate ourselves so much. The only way that we can make ourselves feel good is if we show hatred to the person that looks just like us. Right. That's the only way we can make ourselves feel good. You understand? And it's not our fault. Right? It's not our fault. Right? This is something. Alright, this is something that we learn from oppression. Oppression caused this slavery. You see this right here? All right, who did this happen to? This this is why we in the ghettos today, we haven't been able to recover ourselves from what you see on this sign right here. So today, we walking around like that. Teach! Man, you understand? Give me that Ecclesiastes. Because the Bible says that oppression, what you see right here is oppression, is it not? Does this feel good? This don't feel good. You think anybody like uh, uh, be, uh, uh, being on an auction block butt naked when somebody coming to, 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 to feel their genitals, to, to, to look inside their mouth and their teeth to see how healthy they were, to see how long they would live to work on the plantation? You think somebody would enjoy it? That's, that's oppression, is it not? Oppression, right? What's that going to do to you? Generation after generation after generation after generation to the point where now you don't even know your name no more. Right. You don't know what country you came from no more. Right. Right? You don't got no language. You speak the language of your oppressor. Right? right? Come on, read what you got. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7 and verse 7. Bring it out. Surely oppression make it the wise man mad. So this brother might be wise. Right? But... His, his, his anger and his madness, you understand? From what? His oppression right. has made him mad. That's right. He's out here like a madman today. You can't even understand what he's saying. He can't keep his peace. He can't be patient. You understand? He can't rule his spirit. Right. He can't, it's like a city without walls. Anybody can come in. That's how the spirit is right now. You understand? Right, you have to be able to rule your spirit. You understand? Only the laws of God can rule your spirit. You understand? Only this can tame a black man. You understand? Only this Bible can tame a black man. Right. Only this Bible can tame a black woman. We a different creature. You understand? We are a different creature today. All right. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark.
Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.